Hi, today is August the 12th and we're walking through the Bible answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? I want to remind you that you have identity because you're created in God's image. That's all you need. I am that I am is what God said in Exodus chapter 3. And if you're created in his image, you are who you are. I am who I am, lowercase letters. And most people want more. They want basically what they're saying is they want value. And the value that God gave you and me was to give his life. Jesus Christ gave his life for us. And God the Father gave his son. And so we are continuing to look for the answers to these questions in Nehemiah chapter 3 verse 15 through chapter 5, 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 25 through 40, Psalm 32, 1 through 11, Proverbs 21, 5 through 7, and Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 15, 5 through and 13. It says, remember, Nehemiah went to Jerusalem and his one purpose, he had a purpose, was to rebuild the wall and repair the gates. And so verse 15, the fountain gate was repaired by Shalom, son of the leader of, and he rebuilt it, he roofed it, he set up its doors and installed its bolts and bars. Then he repaired the wall of the pool of Siloam near the king's garden, and he rebuilt the wall as far as the stairs that descend from the city of David. And in this reading, I noticed a phrase, and it's next to him. The next to him. And I went back and I reread yesterday's reading, and there was a lot of next to him and beside him and, and next to. And it's the next to him. And I have drawn a, not sure if you can see that, but I've drawn a chain. And God is showing us that if we are to rebuild anything in our lives, that we have to work next to somebody. So we have a relationship. So the chain is, uh, you know, like, like, like this. And I'm next to somebody and I'm working together with. And I don't want to look to my neighbor who is working on the wall and, and criticize the way he's doing that. I want to encourage, yeah, good job. You're doing a great job rebuilding your part of the wall. So I want to really concentrate on the next to him. So in verse 17, next to him, and then came, and then 18, next down the line, and then 19, next to them, and 20, next to, the, next to him, and then uh, 22, the next repairs were made by, and then 23, after them, 24, next was, and then next to him in verse 25, verse 27, then came the people who repaired another section. And then 28, above the horse gate, the priests repaired the wall. Each one repaired the section immediately across from his own house. Next, uh, Zadok also rebuilt the wall across from his own house and beyond him. So there's still a next to, next to, next to. Verse 30 is next. And then while Mashulam rebuilt the wall across from where he lived, uh, somebody else repaired the wall as far as. And then there's another. Then he continued as far as. And so there was a point to point to point to point. If anybody had not done their section of the wall, there would have been a gap in the wall. One gap is all it takes for the defense not to be complete. And, you know, the working your own part of the wall, work your own family, uh, support your own family. We, we always want to look to other people and other sections of the wall, basically, to rebuild it. But look to see what section of the wall is right in front of your own home. Fix your own family. Fix your own family's defenses and fix uh, fix relationships in your own family and rebuild that defense wall. And every time there is pro uh, productive work going on, there is the enemy pushback. So uh, God pushes forward, the enemy pushes back. So God pushes forward, the enemy pushes back. God pushes forward, the enemy pushes back. 
And you have to be able to know who the enemy is. That's not part of our study this year. But there is a who is God, who am I, who is God, and what is our relationship. But there also is who is my enemy, or what and what is he like, what are his characteristics, who is your enemy. So Sanballat came, and he was very, very angry. He flew into a rage, and he mocked the Jews. And, he, and then he said, do they actually think they can make something of stones from a rubbish heap? And then he got some help. Somebody came beside him in the fight against the, uh, God's plan. Tobiah, the Ammonite, who was standing beside him, remarked, that stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along the top of it. Now, did Nehemiah get off the wall, stop his work, and, you know, have a little fist fight with these people? No, he said, um, he prayed. He said, I'm going to go to God, and I'm going to ask God for help. He started the work, and he's going to help us finish it. Hear us, our God, for we are being mocked. And remember, it's God's plan, so it's God's responsibility to protect the plan. The enemies. The enemy wants to defeat you, and a lot of times it, there's, a, there's a voice in the back of your head, and you can't really see where it's coming from, but the voice says, I can't do this. I have too many things that are against me. There is nobody, there is nobody beside me. There is nobody working with me. I can't do it alone, and the voice is the one that's saying, I can't. Now, if, if the voice had said, Joanne, you can't do this. You're not good enough. Uh, you can't be perfect. I would look at the voice and say, shut up. Get away from me. But if the voice says, I can't, and I believe it's my own thought, and I believe my own thoughts, and I'm convinced because I can't, then there could be an opportunity for them, for the enemy to defeat me. And I would believe a lie. So a lie is spoken. I can't. And then if I believe that, I'm going to stop and not even try. So, you know, it says in verse 6 of chapter 4, At last the wall was completed to half its height around the entire city, for the people had worked with enthusiasm. Now, the beginning of a work is very easy because everybody's excited about it. The end of a work is really exciting because you see the accomplishment that you made, but the middle is not so easy. There is a challenge in the middle, especially when the enemy pushes back and fights against you. And the enemy was successful because the people started to complain in verse 10. The workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to be moved. So they're looking at what needs to be done. They're not looking what has already been done, but they're looking at what needs to be done. And this is what they say. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. So they repeated the enemy's words and they accepted them as truth and they took them on for themselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying before they know what's happening, we will swoop down on them and kill them and end their work. And then uh, Nehemiah is basically like, nope. Verse 14, then as I looked over the situation, I called together the nobles and the rest of the people and said to them, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord, this is our God, who is great and glorious. He brings light to dark places and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your homes. In Jesus' name, I declare, there's a lot of people, moms and dads, and maybe even brothers and sisters who have sat down and said, there's no hope. There's too much rubble. Uh, the walls have been destroyed. The defenses have been annihilated. And there's no, no hope in rebuilding my family. I'm just going to pretend another family is mine. But I want to tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you not to be discouraged. Don't be afraid. Fight, 
fight, fight for your brothers, fight for your sisters, fight for your mom, fight for your dad, fight for your daughter and fight for your son, fight for your husband, fight for your wife and fight for your home, which consists of people. Fight, fight, fight. Do the work and live your life, but in one hand, you're going to build, and another hand, fight the enemy, and uh, just continue to show your love for them, and rebuild what the enemy has destroyed. When our enemies heard that we knew of their plans, and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to our work on the wall, but from then on, only half the men worked while the other half stood guard. And then the laborers carried on their work with one hand supporting their load, but another hand with a sword. So work and your weapon is not carnal. Your weapon is spiritual. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the gifts of the Spirit. You have the ability to pray. So fight with all of your might with the weapons that God has given to you for your family and the wall that is around your home. When you hear the blast of the trumpet, rush to wherever, wherever it is sounding, then our God will fight for us. So the preview to this statement is that Nehemiah and the laborers were all spread apart. They were not close together. But Nehemiah had a trumpeter, and he said, when the trumpet blows, come and join me and be united in the battle. And then they worked, and they worked hard, we carried our weapons with us at all times, even when we went for water. So spiritually, you are in a battle and the fight is on at all times in your sleep, when you wake up, during the day and at night. The fight is for your children, your children's children and your children's children's children and for generations to come. And the again, you have spiritual weapons, you have the Holy Spirit. And you have everything you need. And then chapter 5, it talks about a different kind of battle. It talks about a financial battle. The people of Judah were financially strapped. And they were financially slaves to the people who had lent them money. And God had said, do not, do not charge your, your people um, usury, a, an interest. Don't make slaves out of them because they have to borrow from you and be willing to give and not to be repaid. And he said, in some of the people were, were telling uh, the leaders, we have already sold some of our daughters and we're helpless to do anything about it. And they're asking for financial help. And Nehemiah, after he heard these complaints, he talked to the nobles and officials and said, you are hurting your own relatives by charging interest when they borrow money. I have this great idea. I don't know how I could ever make it work. It's just an idea of having a fund in a Christian organization and, you know, helping people to get out of debt when they are being charged high interest, especially credit card. Of course, I'd have to, to you know, have some teaching on not getting into debt again. But, um, you know, it's so hard to get out of debt when the interest is so high. And then he said, we're doing all we can to redeem and save our Jewish relatives. God has done everything he can to redeem us. And he said, you're selling them back into slavery again. And what you're doing is not right. So let's stop the business of charging interest. And they praise the Lord. First Corinthians talks about, again, a financial a battle. Those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them for this world as we know it will soon pass away. And there's so much in Psalms and it, it describes the joy of the Lord because our sins are forgiven. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it says if we don't confess our sin, uh, our, you know, our strength is going to evaporate. And the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. And there's a God-directed self-control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but loving kindness to those who trust in the Lord. Proverbs 21, 5 through 7. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. I want you to share these videos so God's word may be heard and have an absolutely blessed day.